Um, I would like to thank the organizers of this session for having this. I think it's a great opportunity for us to get together and learn a lot of ideas. Um, I am from the Central Nebraska Math Teacher Circle. My um, team is made up of um, three um, teachers involved in middle school. Andrew Blake, Kathleen Klein is actually in Kearney, and she is really great at other sessions at her middle school, so we're charged there. Jeanette Corella is a math coach at a um, at Grand Island, which is about 45 minutes away from us. And then myself and Dr. String, Jane Strahecker, she's in the College of Education. And um, our mission statement is to, you know, we want to have problem solvers in the community and uh, re-energize our passion for mathematics. Um, so we meet about four to five times a year, twice in the fall, two to three times in the spring, depending on the weather. Um, our January meeting has sometimes been canceled due to ice. Mondays seem to work really well for us, and we try to keep it just to the two-hour session. It doesn't seem too overwhelming to other to people that devote two hours. Um, we've had about 10 to 12 people on average, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. We have we invite middle school teachers, we invite high school teachers, we also um, invite teacher candidates from the college to come. Um, and it's great professional development for them. They also get to meet other teachers that they might work with, which is great. We do send the invites by email to previous attendees and to the principals and hope the principals will forward it on. Nebraska doesn't have a nice system for, you know, just get the math teachers in the area if you wanted to just search for their email addresses. So we'd like to work on um, getting a better database to advertise by email, possibly even sending postcards through Vistaprint. Apparently they have really good deals, like you only pay for shipping. So we're going to look into that as soon as I get home so we can get those out. I'd also like to recruit other presenters, possibly doing co-presenting or mentoring with the project. Um, and trying to find other sources of funding. I get money from the university, but you know, maybe talking to restaurants about sponsoring the meal would be great. Um, so I'm talking about sticky notes, and if you see somebody come in that doesn't have a few sticky notes around them, they share a stack with them. Um, they have a lot of uses in a classroom, exit surveys, you know, just have them answer one question about the day, stick it on the doors and leave. Histograms are fun, Map Jeopardy, using them with outdoor tiles. I like the three inch by three inch. It's a good size and it's square. So what I want to specifically talk about is um, making a larger square. So take some sticky notes and you want to create a large square where there's no gaps or overlaps. Up in the upper right hand corner is kind of an example of using four sticky notes. So take your sticky notes and you can, um, you know, when you're in your session, you can do this at a table or at a wall. On your little paper, you have a whole lot of them. And then once you've created your square, we want to make a connection between the number of sticky notes and the edge length of that created square. So one sticky note, the edge length will be our unit of measure. So how many sticky notes make up the edge length of your large square? So I'll let you think about that for a little bit, making a conjecture. Okay, so let's fill in our table. If you had that number. There's some examples, not all of them, of course. So what do you guys think is the connection between our number of sticky notes and the edge length of the created square? Bob? Square root. Square root. Okay, so the square root of the number of sticky notes is the edge length of a large square. Did anybody have a different connection or a different word? Did 
Do they look at it a little different? Well, I suppose something to do with it is some of odd numbers. Like one sticking out, uh, two sticking out, three sticking out, four sticking out, five, and four, three, two, one. Okay, thinking about it as a sum of, yeah. of numbers, <coughs> looking at a pattern. Did anybody think about it the other way? Take the as, as, as the number of sticky notes is the square of the edge line. There we go. Thank you, Nicholas. Okay, both of these relationships are correct, but you might look at it differently. Um, I have not had any feedback from our group that I presented this to if they used it with students who did not know about square roots. But I would just like to know what kids who do not know about square roots would say with this connection and how they would go further in this activity. Um, oops, I should have hidden this picture. Create a large square using five sticky notes. We're going to go back. Create a large square using five sticky notes. And what are your thoughts on that? Get out the scissors. Yeah. Get out the scissors. And um. Maybe you can do some more writing the score. Or you're just putting, you're just making a square with four, and then you're slapping one on top of it. Okay, so. You're just slapping one on top of it. Okay, well, I don't know. Oops, this is not the, it sticks for a little bit. Well, you just buy squares, and you've got a square there. Well, I, I yeah, it's down a bit. That was a big gap. So, Nicholas, kind of your idea? I put it on the bottom. Okay. Okay. But we do want a square, right? Yeah. We'd like to have a square. mentioned getting out the scissors. the scissors because we have a nice square to start with and so if I tear it maybe I can create a square so how might I use scissors or tear a post-it note to create a square <coughs> where might you tear it Cut it in half, okay? So I kind of didn't do half, but I'll stick them together. So here's my two halves, okay? And then what? Where am I going to stick? I, 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 I would divide oh. the uh, one stick you know, into four equal parts, and then I stick one on both sides, and then on the other side, so more or less the so one side here, and then on the, on the other, on the same, on the same side. Okay. And then on the other side, no, adjacent to it, looks like too hot. If you tear it correctly, you still get your sticking part. Yeah, but there's a hole there. There's a hole there. But this is a decent approximation for a square. It kind of looks like a square, but it's got a little bit of a hole. And what's the size of our hole there? The short length yeah. squared. Yeah. And what's our short length? Well, it has to be a little less than a four. A four. A four. A four. 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 Actually, a a four. So this little is a sixteenth, which is, you know, kind of not too bad of an estimate. So there's my picture with this idea where we tore it into fourths and then there's a little bit of hole. So two and a quarter might be a good approximation for the square root of five. Now, this was kind of an afterthought when I was preparing this that I thought, oh, let's do multiplication. So what is two and a quarter squared? What is two and a quarter squared? 
Here's our yeah. one, two, three, four. Yeah. Put these pieces okay. together to make five. And then now we would fill in the hole when I'm thinking about five and a quarter squared. It's just like, wow, that was kind of a neat, neat thing to go after. Um, what other numbers of sticky notes might be good to use with students just to have them maybe take a wrong step? Okay. I think um, 12 sticky notes is really nice. Take 12 sticky notes and create a square. <coughs> And um, I think a common uh, error would be to say, well, I made a three by four rectangle. So it looks almost like a square. It's as close to a square as you can get, but then if we start tearing, we can get a little bit better picture. And you could actually, I lost my quarters, but start shaping off a little bit and fill in that little square like confetti. Let's just throw our post-it notes in the blender and then we can yeah. post it, uh, stick them down. Um, so we can use similar strategies to estimate our square roots. Um, you could also do this with estimating square roots of fractions. There's no reason to have to use whole post-it notes. Um, I think experimenting with using a number of post-it notes that's one less than a perfect square is nice. So if you were to think about 15, the strategy we used before, we created the biggest square that we possibly could, and then we stick the extras around it. Well, with 15, that hole that you have left over is kind of big. So how might you adjust for that big hole? Um, a question that came up at the math teacher circle was, can you use the strategy to estimate the square root of quadratic polynomials? So using your po post-it notes like algebra tiles, you know, will this work out? And, you know, we played around with it, but it was kind of hard to decide when you had a post-it note that we labeled X on one side and one on the other, how do we tear it exactly? But I think it was a great idea to take us a little bit farther. Um, Last night, talking with a friend, we cut our post notes a little bit differently, and we had no gap with our square root of five. So I took two post-it notes right next to each other and divided them. So this is now a one by two right triangle. And take those one by two right triangles, and then right in the middle, one more post-it note fit right in the middle. So it was kind of like, so below here, I have my email address if you're interested in any information about our teacher circle. And thank you for having me.